Welcome to the Gamescape, everybody. My name is Jarek, and today we're back in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This is episode 91 of our playthrough. And in our previous episode, we managed to work our way through the rest of Arilu's laboratory here. And uh, Dre the Dretch Suture let us in through the barrier and gave us the keys to the rest of the barriers. When asked why, he told us that Arilu said we'd be coming, and that when we did, to offer the lexicon of paradox and not to hide from them. He was encouraging us to take the book, but it kind of felt off. And so we decided against doing that. Suture wanted us to let him take it instead, but we chased him off. By denying the power of the book, we gained a certain power ourselves, uh, basically by refusing it. And so we were um, basically pumped up to our next mythic level. And I got everybody moved up and we got everybody last stand so that we stopped getting one shotted by all of these uh, different attacks that we keep getting hit by. And so that should help us out a lot with our party survival. Uh, we still have a bunch of the rest of the party to level up to. Uh, this We can only do the, the group that's with us right now, but that's okay. Um, we did also find the uh, crystals that she was recording her experiments on and a projector to play them on. And so we kind of uh, figured out that, well, we saw her basically change herself from a mortal into a half demon. And then there was another one that explained how Suture had been one of Discari's demons who barely survived passage through the wound. And then he was reformed in the material plane here as a lowly little dretch. And she had to do quite a lot of work on him just to save him even after that happened. So there's more to, there's more to Suture than what it appears. Uh, he kind of, he kind of got the low end of the stick and we did let him go. Uh, I don't know if that was a great idea on our part, but uh, we did it, and so he's still out there. Hopefully he remembers that we were merciful to him. I doubt it. Probably not going to, but it's okay. We'll deal with him again when the time comes, if the time comes. So, um, With him gone and us having the keys to the barrier, we were able to finish exploring the rest of the laboratory. We did run into a few powerful demons, but we managed them. And Sila was killed, but we brought her back with a raised dead scroll. And so she's back in okay shape now, but... Uh, Three of our other part, well, two of our other party members really, uh, Aura doesn't count, but are still kind of knocking on death's door. So even with their, uh, even with their last stand ability now, um, we're going to need to get back to Dresden. Also, we are right up on our, uh, right up on the edge of our corruption here. So we're going to have to head back. So we're going to be doing that. Um, we did free the trapped angel that was in there, along with the few mortals that were trapped in there. Uh, it turned out that the angel was Targona, which was not a huge surprise uh, to anybody, I don't think. But uh, she was missing one wing, and it had been replaced by a Rilu with something a little more de not demonic, but it was still functional. And so, anyway, they followed us out, and uh, she was anxious to get back to Dresden as well. So, that's where we're picking up today. Uh, I, th I thought about kind of staying down here and doing a couple more little things while we were down here. But like I said, we're right up on the edge of our corruption. So we're going to head back to Dresden. We'll get the rest of the party rested up and get them so that they're no longer knocking on death's door. And we will also get the um, campaign map and any other stuff that needs to be done finished up. Uh, we do still have some things that we need to take care of here. Uh, night gamblers. Uh, we need to be down in the cemetery at night, some at some point, to talk to to Sociel and see what's going on with him. We also apparently have to talk to uh, um, Irabeth yet, so we'll we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, the dragon hunt went fine, so we'll be doing that. So let's start on Citadel here, and I'll bring you right back with after the loading screen. Okay, here we go. Athamas, an older man in dusty, tra dusty traveling clothes waves at you. His face is tanned, but his gray eyes are bright. Commander, aren't you the commander? Well met. My name is Lathamus, the antiquarian. I study ancient relics. Perhaps you've heard of me. Though if you haven't, it doesn't matter. An antiquarian, do you sell anything? Lathamus shrugs. Alas, I don't. They call me the antiquarian because of my love for ancient items that might otherwise seem mundane and useless. If you understand the principles of archaeology, sometimes even a shard of an old old oil lamp is enough to shine a light on the darkness of history. Um, what would you? What do, can I do for you? I'm planning a rather dangerous expedition, and I will need the help of a strong, skilled warrior. Not without recommend, recompense, of course. I found an ancient map leading to a certain cave system, a dragon burial ground, but it wasn't merely a place where old dragons came to die. 
I have a theory that once upon a time, a great battle took place in these caves and many relics and artifacts were left behind. You're waging a long and difficult war. Help me uncover the secrets of the Dragon Burial Ground and I'll give you all of my savings. Believe me, I've earned a lot during my years of travel. All I need is for someone to clear the way down to the caves. Who knows what sort of demons inhabit that place now? Um, more details, please. Of course, I'll answer any questions. Uh, why do you want me to get personally involved? You could just ask me to send an armed escort with you on this expedition. This spells a little trappy, doesn't it? Lathamus looks around. Don't think I'm trying to disparage them, but they are ordinary soldiers after all. What if we discover a treasure down below? Will they resist the allure of gold for the sake of science? Will they keep our expedition a secret, even if my competitors promise them huge sums of money? No, I'm sorry, but I will only rely on someone who is trusted by the Queen. Uh, where'd you get this map? I bartered it from a ranger in exchange for an amulet. The ranger wasn't keen on do going deeper into the world wound, and I doubt he even understood how valuable this map might be for science. I dare say he made a poor bargain. Okay, what, what's this about your theory? Tell me more. I'm interested in dragon history, from the days of Aspu to the creation of De uh, Dehek up to now. But dragons are reclusive creatures, and they don't enjoy discussing their history with strangers. Sure, we know about many historical conflicts involving dragons, but if for larger scale battles we need between dragons, they prefer to keep quiet about those. And thus we historians remain in the dark. And then suddenly I find a map that identifies this cave system and its surrounding areas as dungeon burial as a dragon burial ground. But mass burial sites are so uncharacteristic of their kind. Dragons are reclusive by nature, both in life and in death. I assume an ancient battlefield awaits us there. But who fought for whom? Who fought whom and for what cause? This is what we have to find out. Can you imagine we could discover a brand new, hitherto unknown page of history? Uh, yeah, I don't care about the names. Um, what do you hope to find in this burial ground? I seek evidence that a raging battle was fought there and perhaps also evidence of the reasons for such a conflict. Dragons could not gather together for such a large battle over some petty, inconsequential feud would not gather together. Oh no, they must have had a serious reason. And that, perhaps, is the biggest mystery of all dragon kind. All right, I've heard enough. Uh, we'll help you out. Splendid, Lathmus smiles, but the smile doesn't reach his observant gray eyes. I shall immediately head to the cave entrance and await you there. I think I can handle this part of the journey. But as for the dangers that await down below, I fear I know nothing about them. Dragon Barrel Ground added. Still smells like a trap. Not gonna lie. Uh, Erebeth, I apparently have something to report to you. Um, Erebeth salutes with a sincere respect. Good afternoon, Commander. What can I do for you? Taking care of the dragon that was attacking our patrols. That's one less problem to contend with. Now we can take the extra lookouts off the dragon duty and reassign them to useful tasks. Excellent work, Commander. Well, thank you. Um, yep. Yep, good. Gotta go. All right, here we go. Look on the Crusade map. Hunting down mutiny. Uh, we have this thing done. Cowardice and faint hardness are like rust. They start small but can blight a whole blade. Any warrior spreading panic, disloyalty, or open rebellion must be rooted out and punished as an example. Riots must be nipped in the bud. Such drastic measures will surely lessen the eagerness to join the crusade, but there's no place for the weak-willed in the crusade to begin with. Troublemakers undermining troops morale have been punished. Uh, crusade morale increased by 16 to 25. Recruitment growth for trainable units by 10%. Cost of recruiting mercenaries down increases by 10%. Okay. Fate of the chill roars hide and tusks. Uh, everything's ready for the relics augmentation. So apparently we can probably do that now, I guess. I don't know. Okay, here we go. We can make a short spear out of it. Uh, it's a plus two short spear. Plus two bonus and damage rolls. I mean... Or we can go with a light spiked shield. That's uh, plus two, plus two armor class, armor check penalty of magic shield is lessened by one. Um, 
I mean, I, I don't have a use for either one of those two things, to be completely honest, but the shield seems more useful. Okay. All right. Problem with nine lives. Quartermaster brought cats to Dresden so that they would keep the store safe from rats. Smaller demons have learned to assume the form of a cat to sneak into the city and wreak havoc. The soldiers are ready to start hunting cats, but the quartermasters are against. Um, all right, so we can uh, leave the cats and exercise vigilance. Adds logistic points and leadership points. We can get rid of the cats. Adds leadership and logistic points. So same thing, just flipped. Uh, we don't have a trickster path. Uh, we can ask the help of the Bastet, which gives us blessing of Bastet. Decree. Energy and point income increases by five. Um. I think energy point increase. We're not really having too much difficulty with our energy points, I don't think. Although income is income, it's probably not the worst thing to have more. Uh, let's go with that. So we'll have the Bastet cult help us out with that. Okay, we've got a runaway. It's been revealed that one of the Crusaders is a criminal on the run. One year ago, the knight murdered a noble in the Erosion and escaped justice. The killer repented and joined the Crusader army to atone for his sin, but the daughter of the murdered aristocrat wants vengeance and requests the criminal be arrested and tried. Um, add finance points if we try him. If we uh, take him under protection, morale increases, which we absolutely don't need. We are, like, maxed out on morale. Uh... Hey, we're not evil, so we're not going to do that. Uh, that's also an evil thing. Um, chaotic, lawful. Uh, we are heading towards lawful. This is one way to do it that's going to actually benefit us, and so we'll we'll take that path. Okay, criminal stripped of his knighthood is was sent to serve some time in a Carver's jail. The murderer has been punished, and the victim's daughter has, been, has made a substantial donation to the Crusader cause. One more here, guys. Underground Avengers, a group of mongrels that arrived in Dresden, is itching for a fight. Lan worries that the belligerent recruits might ignore their orders in battle, lose their heads, and then lose their lives. Uh, we can portion them into the position them in the front ranks. Gives us 30 mongrel fighters. Um... We can rein them in and position them in the rear. It gives us more sharpshooters. Now, we already have some, so this is probably what we want to do. Uh, this one fast gives us pacify them with a prayer. Uh, all mongrel fighters and mongrel sharpshooters gain the tough feat. Well, that seems better than just making them sharpshooters. Just turn them into sharpshooters and give them tough. I think that's probably good. Uh, let's do that. Hey, this probably isn't uh, this probably isn't available unless you have certain mystic paths. I'm guessing. Uh, this option's unavailable because the mongrels did not taste demonic maze in the shield, do not demonic madness in the shield maze, or because you do not choose the path of the demon. Okay, so that's fine. If we would have sided with Wendwag, I think that would have been an option. It looks like. All right, so those, those. let's take a look at our map here. Um, we did have somebody's marching toward us. Uh, it's this group here. Uh, they're heading our way. They're coming this way, so they're going to hit Stone Maze, so we need to get down to Stone Maze. So let's get moving. Um, let's make sure we got the right group set here. Yes, we do. Okay. We'll get down to Stone Maze and we'll defend there. Um, I don't think we can get there necessarily. Uh, we're, we've only got 13 points left anyway. So we'll defend here at Stone Maze and we'll be fine. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to start building her up with more guys. So she wants, like I was saying kind of before, I want to go with a lot of sword and boards for her so that we can just let her just soak damage and just be just tank while she's throwing fireballs and stuff around. 
I think is the right to a right choice for her. Um, we want marksman probably 2700. I mean, we got a ton right now of uh finance points, and in fact, maybe what we're going to do is also do a little upgrade somewhere, maybe since we are so good for finance points i think we can maybe take a look and see if we can do something somewhere so let's like take a look at what we've got going in sork here uh we don't have anything going in here yet but we can get some stuff going in here this would be a good place for like just instead of barracks and stuff let's put in an inn to get a little more finance points coming and a supply center to bring in some more materials and then uh, probably a good place for another hospital. Uh, with the inn, we can't put a barracks or anything in here, but uh, that's okay. And then an alchemist slab here uh, would give us plus 10 bonus to energy for all of our, all of our um, generals. So that's good. So those, we'll build those up like that. And that'll help us out. That'll help us out a little bit with our uh, economy. We do have a couple of little armies down here too yet. Um, that's another 100 finance points. We should probably go get that. And then there's a, a mace there that we don't really care about too much. Uh, over here, we got some more resources, although it's not much, but that's a pretty tiny little army too. And then this army here has the broken phylactrophy of Stevanius the Rotten. That would be a lich. That's a big army. He's got uh, 500 skeletons, uh, what, 120 marksmen, skeleton marksmen, and then 80 skeleton champions. That's, that's going to be a stiff fight. That'll be a stiff fight. Okay, so that's good. I think we're good there. How are we looking for finance points and stuff here? Uh, we still have a bit. We could probably build a little something else here. Um, you know what might not be the worst thing? Is if we were to come here and manage this place here, if we if we can get the... Since this is one of our areas that kind of is uh, constantly under threat, I'm thinking we put a watchtower in here. Because uh, that'll help out our armies in its area of, of effect. So, And then um, it also probably wouldn't be the worst thing to have another garrison barracks here. And that's about all we can afford for just for the moment. That's okay. We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, good. Now, I think we just picked up some more mongrels, so let's find them. These are they. So we're going to send them down. Uh, she down here has the other mongrels, right? Uh, we're going to just send them down there anyway. Okay, and then let's do this. Yes, she does have those other mongrels. And now they have the tough feet. They should anyway. Uh, maybe that's not finished yet. So they might be uh, might still be working on that. And then we'll get them into the stone maze there, and we'll just sit there and wait for them. Whereas up here, we've got her. And what are these guys? These are barbarians. I mean, they're not that tough. They do a lot of damage, though. Uh, let's leave them separate. And uh, for now, anyway, and if we send out if we send out this other army again, we might do something. We'll, we might combine them together or something. We'll see. But she's not ready to go out with just 50, uh, 50 shield bearers either. So, all right, let's get out of here. Let's get some other stuff done. OK, good there. Let's rest. Can't rest here. Even though I can. OK, we got to fix this again. Get another raised dead scroll since we used one of our existing ones. Animate dead. Sorry guys, there's uh, like a huge list of scrolls that he can write because he's got access to all of it. So 
Ah, uh, there it is. Okay, we're still doing good for ingredients there. You must thank fate every day for blessing you with the celestial blood in your veins. Hardly. I stopped doing that when I was told for the thousandth time that I was a disgrace to my blood and of my lineage. Right. Scroll's successful. I don't I don't think we can fail actually. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um oh. Hello. Hand of the inheritors here. The angel sounds concerned. Champion, I promised to advise you, but now I need your counsel. I've received news that both pleases and worries me. The light of your nobility shines true, and like a beacon, it draws heavenly warriors who come to fight at your side. These angelic warriors set a high example of courage and irre irreproachable virtue, and many of the ordinary soldiers, especially the young ones, desperately wish to be like them. They take vows, do penance, and train to the point of exhaustion. Their dedication is laudable, but it's not without danger. The strain, both physical and spiritual, may prove unbearable for many of them. Rather than strengthen themselves, they risk doing the opposite, and it may leave them defenseless against the enemy at a critical moment. So should we praise their self-sacrifice, or should we encourage them to take care of themselves and moderate their zeal? Um, okay, um, tell me about these warriors. They are valiant denizens of heaven. One part of their souls compelled... One part of their soul compelled them to honor the law of creation and steer clear of mortals in their war. The other part appealed to their mercy and their desire to protect mankind, and that voice was stronger. These are the covert soldiers who left heaven willingly, without permission, to stand side by side with your people. Okay. Um. All right. What do we got here? All units gain cautious, or uh, we can go with the lawful. It affects the morale. Effects of positive morale on the chance of additional action doubles for all units. Ooh. Okay, so positive morale, they'll they'll get more actions more often, or they get the cautious feat, which says all adjacent allies units gain a plus one bonus to AC for one round at the start of each round. So this would allow us to basically up our defenses by keeping all of our guys shoulder to shoulder or or adjacent let's they it it could be front back too or this lets them potentially act more often um that's a tough choice both of those are good that's a good that's a tough choice um let's say I do kind of like the defense part of it, but this is really an offensive game. Let's uh, let's go with this. Let's go with the heroes will not be forgotten and get the uh, get the chance the double the chance for them to get an extra action. I will inform the soldiers of your decision. Hearing the command that the commander approves of their actions will give them strength. OK, thank you for listening to me. I will demand no more of your time, but I promise to return when you need my advice or when I need your or when you need my advice or when I need yours. Okay, got somebody else coming up here. Somebody in uh, Yakker. A, fa a familiar figure clad in black armor appears before you and ceremoniously offers a salute. Greetings, Knight Commander. Yakker and Kel from the Paralictor Deranges Squad at your service. I am afraid it's becoming a habit, but once again, I bring dire news. Yakker bring shrugs apologetically. This was the guy who came and told us about... Uh, the the Hell Knights being in trouble in the first place. Yakker casts a nervous sideways glance at his superior officer. Paralictor, while you've been following the Knight Commander, much has happened at our outpost. Enough empty chatter, Knight. Give your report. Although Regil's tone remains dispassionate as ever, his gaze has grown in intensity. He watches Yakker like a predatory beast prowling ever closer to its prey. Yakker snaps to attention and repeats a message he's clearly taken pains to memorize. Reporting to whom it may concern, a group of Hell Knights has vanished under suspicious circumstances. They were last seen on the road to the occupied city of Eyes. The Knights were escorting a group of cultists and carrying letters captured in a recent raid to, on an underground hideout. They disappeared after reporting their approach to our outpost, and the chapters quartered there failed to find any traces of the missing Knights. The situation is highly abnormal. Such a large squad 
would have uh, could have fallen in battle, but they could hardly have vanished into thin air without so much as a sign of struggle. Powerful demonic forces might have been involved in their disappearance. Thus, we inform Dresden about the incident and plead for help in our investigation. All right, tell me about this hideout. Uh, where were these cultists captured? It was a secret hideout consisting of a large warehouse and several workshops, which produced equipment for cultist cells all over Mendev. We'd been tracking the cultists for a while before finally locating and attacking them. Strangely, our intelligence reports had indicated that several powerful demons were always present inside the hideout, but our strike team only found mortals. We captured and escorted them to our outpost for questioning. And what of this outpost where the knights were last seen? As I understand it, Paralictor Renth, Ty, and Deathan informed you about the outpost during their visit to Dresden. While we finished its construction just a few days ago, it's already our largest staging ground in the Eastern World Wound. We have a small permanent garrison station there, and we use it as a resting area for the Hell Knights involved in various expeditions. Um, fine. Regil waves Yakur away, then sets his pale yellow eyes on you. We must visit the Hell Knight outpost as soon as we can. I suggest you treat this incident as seriously as possible. It might have unexpected consequences. Okay, Hell Knight's outpost has been revealed. Okay, that seems like it's everything. Uh, everybody is rested. We need to go outside. Because we have some people to talk to yet. So uh, we definitely need to talk to... We definitely need to talk to the hand of the, of the inheritor and let him know that we got or going to back. He's up here. And we also definitely need to talk to the storyteller because there's all kinds of stuff we've got for him. Ah, here's Targona here. All right. My watch goes on. Greetings, champion. Greetings, and thank you for saving my heavenly sister in arms. Targona has returned to us. What a joyous, joyous news. All right. Um, did you learn anything about what happened at Polaris Fall, about the echo of Discari and his victim? Not yet, says the angel, sadness clear in his voice. My heavenly mistress does not answer my call. She's clearly occupied by other matters and concerns. So far, I have learned nothing of use from my fellow angels, but they are seeking knowledge of the echo and where he takes his victims. I still have hope that we'll be able to save his victim. However, this is a, this matter cannot be permitted to overshadow the importance of the crusade. No matter how personal it may be for you and me, stopping the demons is our main goal. Tracking down the Echo and uh, saving our ally, alas, is not. Okay. Um, uh, can you tell me anything, anything about my power? I'm afraid not. Even I am not privy to all the workings of my radiant mistress. I believe that she has chosen you, and I know that she watches over her chosen ones most attentively. She does not lead mortals by the hand, but allows them to prove themselves, to prove that they are worthy of her divine mercy. Almost as soon as I met you, I felt that I had gained a long-lost brother. The flame of heaven burns so brightly within you, it is impossible to miss it. While Iomide was still mortal, she underwent the test of the Star Stone and gained her godhood. It may well be that you are experiencing a similar trial, at the end of which you will remain, you will gain true righteousness and power. All right. Um, I'm not going to say we haven't changed yet, so I'm going to go. We're going to see about talking to Targona since she's right here. There we go. On Hope's Wings is finished. The angel greets you warmly, but her eyes, eyes remain sad. Greetings, my rescuer. There were many things I wished to speak to you about, but now I can't seem to find the words. Being free feels exhilarating, but the bitter realization of how many terrible things happen in my absence weighs on me. Never before has my soul been troubled by so many warring emotions. I contacted the Hand of the Inheritor as soon as I got out. Here on Galarian, I can freely send messages to my celestial brethren, so I know more now than when we first met. Now that I know what happened over the years, I was held prisoner. I know that this was the fifth crusade, driven by desperation and daring like none before it. And I know about the hope you have brought all... To all of us, I thank you. You are the light in this darkness. Okay, well, what did you want to talk about? The angel thinks for a moment. Talk may not be the right word. I need to tell you something important. 
Listen, you know the truth about the Wardstones, how their power is built upon the angels locked inside. My dear brother Larry and I were supposed to end up inside the Wardstones, but we both escaped that fate. He perished. Targona gathers her strength, and I was captured by a Rilu. But there is something else you should know. Even the glorious herald of my goddess was not immediately aware of this. The power of the Wardstones comes from the selflessness of those imprisoned within them. It's not a sophisticated magic that wounds and binds demons, but the angel's voluntary sacrifice, their foregoing of freedom in the name of duty. The truth is, in some rare cases, there's no need to steal anyone inside an artifact to achieve a, uh, to seal anyone inside an artifact to achieve a similar magic effect. There are some such individuals among mortals and immortals who are willing to give their lives to protect others. And when that when this happens, the mortal or immortal can become a living wardstone of a sort, weakening and holding back demons by the force of their uh, their presence alone. Unbeknownst to me, I acquired this power. Even immersed in my enchanted sleep, I protected the poor folk who were imprisoned in Arilu's laboratory with me. And Aleandra and Katir did the same for Polaris Fall. It was their self-sacrifice, so different, but always, always sincere, that protected the temple, not just Polaris power. The hand of the inheritor had long suspected this, but only after speaking to me did he finally realize the truth. He waits. He wants you to know, once we have dealt with more urgent matters, he wants to search for rare souls capable of becoming living wardstones. They will be in the vanguard of your crusade, and they will make demons and demon lords alike tremble in fear. Okay, how, how do we find these people, and what can they do? I don't have the answers to your questions. Being a living wardstone is more than just power. It's more than a gift. It's a true miracle. And like all miracles, it's extremely rare and is manifested only in dire circumstances. That is likely why we never heard of such a thing before now. The demon invasion is the gruesome catalyst that has awoken this hidden power in souls across Galarian. But now that we know what we're looking for, we can recognize a special light in others. It will be a, our weapon in the fight against the Abyss. Hey, did Arilu know about your special abilities? I don't know. She never mentioned it, but something about me piqued her interest. Many of her prisoners were unusual in one way or another, and when she left and ceased her experiments, I think that too was an experiment of sorts. Perhaps she even continued to observe us somehow. Okay, uh, can your wing be healed? If there is such a way, it is unknown to me. The wing has become a part of me. I even feel that if I were to cut it off, it would grow back just as deformed as it is now. Its existence is a challenge for me, and there is nothing left but to accept it. I will not. I will have to live, wondering constantly whether foulness is creeping into my soul, just as it has crept into my body. And may Iomide help me if my fears are ever realized. Okay, are you going to return to heaven? I wouldn't dare. With this wing, with foulness that has become a part of me, how could I enter the shining light of heaven? Besides, I don't want to leave you and the Crusaders. I was meant to join my brothers and sisters inside the Wardstones. Since that, since that did not come to pass, I want to serve the Crusades in another way. All right, thank you very much. Wait, Targona hesitates. I didn't dare ask you before. I wasn't sure I could take the answer, but please tell me how my brother Lariel died. I miss him so much. I want to know what his final minutes were like. Uh... He fought until the last breath to save his mortal comrade, and he left his sword to be raised up by another in the future. The angel listens with rapt attention. We ought to do the same, protect each other even in impossible situations, nurture our hope and know how to give it to others so that the light we carry now will shine on even, shine on even after we die. Thank you for your answer. Like a ray of light, it has revealed the path I must follow. Hand of the Inheritor says, Champion, allow me to speak freely. I have long pondered the thing that so alarmed me, the shadow within your soul. I do realize that most mortals cannot be considered perfect, but you were chosen by heaven, so you must be better than most mortals. You should be a genuine beacon of light to inspire and lead the rest. I have no doubt that your intentions are pure, but it will be easier for you to have faith in yourself if you dedicate yourself entirely to a single goal. So I ask this of you. Open your soul to the light of heaven and swear an oath that you will serve under good and order. This oath will not bind you, but it will make you stronger. Trust me. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I swear to serve only good and order and find joy in this service. 
You feel a spreading warmth inside your soul, along with an amazing sense of harmony, harmony and tranquility. Form to lawful action. I thank you, champion. I can see and sense the shadows being purged from your soul. You've been you've performed a true miracle, a miracle of changing yourself for the good of others. OK, good. Done, done and done. Let's head down here. I want to say if I remember where is the storyteller there he is I thought he was right here somewhere I thought I'd seen him on a map briefly yeah there we go all right Mr. Storyteller the blind elf whispers something under his breath hearing your steps he turns to you slowly greetings Valric have you brought me a new story uh yeah I wanted to talk about our encounter in the dragon's lair I'm sure you do. You're wondering how I ended up there and why I wasn't killed, am I right? Yeah, why did you go to the tower? I've been looking for certain t a certain tower for several years now, and in that place I had a strange feeling of recognition. It seems that tower once belonged to me a long time ago. Knowing my habits, I assumed that some records or other items that could answer the questions about my past may have remained in my home. Unfortunately, I realized too late that the tower was now the lair of the monster. Uh, why didn't the dragon eat you? Well, despite their beastly tempers, dragons are clever creatures. But their way of life does not lend itself to civilized conversations, which is why they do sometimes enjoy a good chat. And even more, a good story. That was what saved me. I had to share a few of my stories with the dragon, hoping to win her over, or at least distract her. Okay. Well, did you find anything of value in the tower? The storyteller nods politely. Yes, thanks to you. The dragon didn't have time to burn everything. I found the memories of my previous life, which I'd forgotten long ago. Okay, well, that's good. Um, we have a bloodstained page that we found in the Molten Scar. We'll give that to him. Storyteller cringes and puts his hand on the bloodstained page. His face contorts into a painful grimace, his voice trembling with terror. No, he's here again. That terrible grating voice. The horrific semblance of a face. The monstrous appearance, myriad insects forming a body with two arms and two legs. He touches me and the disgusting creatures attack my flesh, covering me. They're eating me. They're hungry and will devour everything except my eyes and tongue so that I can see this damn page. So that I can translate the runes written in the ancient, long forgotten elven language. And I translate. It hurts so much. I tried to lie to him. I changed the translation, but he saw through my lie. He got angry. And now I am not lying. I'm not. He takes one of the insects from my face and squishes it with his fingers over the inkwell. Then he dips the quill in and writes with my blood right over the runes. And I continue to dictate. Calistra, when will this be, when will this be over? Let me die. Xanthir, let me die. The storyteller jerks his hand back, terrified. Oh God, such horrible torture. This poor man was tortured to decrypt my notes. He was so tormented that his suffering became thick like molasses. My mind is drowning in it. My own memories are hidden by these images of horror. I can try to get through them, but I will need your help. Tell me everything you've seen and heard. I will try to lean on your words or to use them as a light in the darkness of my forgotten past. The storyteller takes the bloodstained page carefully, as though handling a dangerous insect. I see a magic shape. There is a force pulsating in the center. You've seen the ritual. Tell me, what is the central point? Is it its magic not? Um, center of the magic was a prisoner. Conducted a ritual over... Uh, it was a dead man. They cr killed a crusader and conducted the ritual over his corpse. Storyteller frowns. A dead man? I don't understand. I feel something else. A life. A living soul in the eye of the whirlwind. I don't understand how one ritual can tie up the energies of death and the abyss. Their currents in the world's ephemera are contra-directional. Storyteller sighs weakly. Forgive me, Commander. I cannot get any further. Everything is vague and unclear, and the screams of this poor lad keep ringing in my ears. Okay. Um, I found, like, about 75 pages that might interest you, so let's click through these. Okay. Storyteller, Storyteller carefully takes your find. Yes, you are right. Another piece of evidence from the past I have forgotten. Um, we're going to have several of these. I'll just click through them here real quick here. Uh, Storyteller clenches the pages you brought. His voice becomes a bit younger and more energetic. 
My hand touches the stone wall. The cold pierces my palm like the teeth of a hungry dog sinking into a piece of meat. I don't take my hand away. I let the stone enjoy my warmth in return for its service. It accepts my caress and my unasked question. The one it's been asking thousands upon thousands of times. Where should I go next? Behind me, I hear the loud stomping of the minotaurs that guard this godforsaken place. I tricked and outwitted them, leaving only a trace of my presence. There is darkness lurking up ahead, honing its swords, claws, and teeth in hopes that rare traveler visits its lair. But today it will get no one. This labyrinth is alive. Its red-veined stone walls resemble the guts of a huge creature. If you keep still and listen closely, you can hear it breathing in the wind that sweeps through it, this place. Where do I go from here? Forward. To the place whence the wind carried a faint chuckle. Whence comes the faint smell of ash. Whence a few days ago, Demon Lord Baphomet began his great escape. Baphomet, are you inside of his labyrinth? Yes, I'm traveling through the Ivory Labyrinth. This is not the most pleasant of my journeys, but it is necessary to reach my goal. How were you able to evade all the dangers of the Ivory Labyrinth? The storyteller raises his chin proudly. Have you forgotten who you are speaking to? I am the last Archmage of Kionan. I have been to many dangerous places, and this is just one of the many. It won't be the last. What do you need from the Ivory Labyrinth? An answer to a question, a key to a secret, knowledge that can save many lives. A sliver of a smile appears on the storyteller's lips. My kinfolk were weaklings and cowards. They ran from danger, but one stood up to my enemy, and Baphomet will give me the weapon to win. Okay, please continue. For several years, I had thought about how to defeat Earthfall. My enemy has no flesh, and it's impossible to kill. It blazes through everything in its path. It doesn't enslave, but destroys life itself. And I've found the answer. I know how to save my world. Earthfall came to destroy Galarian. Its strike was brutal, and my world barely withstood it. But what if Earthfall was resisted by not one world, but several worlds at once? What if Heaven or Elysium come to help the dying Galarian? What if I manage to merge my world with another one, meld them together? The power of the disaster will weaken. The denizens of Galarian will be able to temporarily take shelter in the adjacent plane. Civilizations will not die. Our culture will continue to exist. We will not be forgotten. Baphomet, the cunning and insidious Lord of Minotaurs, was once a captive in Asmodeus's prison. But only ten years passed before Baphomet was able to escape, taking, down, taking his own prison with him, which later became the Ivory Labyrinth. Such an achievement deserves respect, and it is the goal of my research. Moving matter between planes is what interests me now. I stop near strange symbols covering the wall of the labyrinth. I run my hand over them to ensure they are real, encrypted riddles drawn by Baphomet during his imprisonment. I take out the bark-covered notebook and painstakingly copy the symbols into it. Behind me, two minotaurs are fighting, deceived by the net of spells I've wrapped around myself like a blanket. Um, The bark-covered notebook... Uh, do you want to connect the planes? That's dangerous. The elf is silent for a moment. When he talks, there is disdain in his voice. Dangerous, difficult, almost impossible. But tell me, is this risk not worth the Thessalian Empire perishing before my eyes? Does Golgan, the Cyclopes Kingdom, deserve death? What about the Aboleth Empire? The storyteller moves his lips silently. Another plane will sit, pay for saving Galarian. There will be wars, and then a new world will come. But we will survive, and we will defeat Earthfall, and history will not condemn the victors. So this notebook, is that the one your mentor gave you? Storyteller lowers his head, but a moment later jerks it back up. Yes. Blinded by my pride, I tore it to pieces when I, brought, when I thought that I would not follow my kinfolk. I am still not going to run, but the knowledge written in this notebook by my former mentor might serve my purpose. The elves managed to open a portal to so uh, Sovereign and keep it open until our people escaped from Galarian. Their cowardice deserves disdain, but their knowledge is unquestionable. I returned to Kionan and gathered the pieces of my torn notebook. Now it is my sword aimed at the heart of Earthfall. By combining the wisdom of the elves, the cunning of Baphomet, I will save the world. Okay. Well, what happened next? I copied the strange symbols into the notebook. I haven't the slightest idea what these scribbles mean. What was the future demon lord thinking when he wrote them, while he was imprisoned in a cell with no way out? 
was he still in his right mind? I will need to keep un I will need help to understand these notes, otherwise decrypting them might take more time than a uh Phrasma is giving me. One of the Minotaurs behind me killed the other one, tore his heart out, and devoured it. His blood stained nose sniffs the air sharply. His bloodshot eyes shift from wall to wall. He senses a stranger, but he doesn't scare me. I'm certain of my powers and the spells binding spells hiding me. I've done my work and can now leave this place. And I still linger. What is this strange presence I feel behind me, like someone is watching me, despite all the protective spells? Who are you? I ask carefully, not hoping for an answer. Darkness, a coy female voice whispers in my ear. Against my will, I shudder. Storyteller stops talking for a long while. The vision ended at the most inter interesting moment, didn't it? He says bitterly at last. Please find the rest of the pages from the spark covered notebook. I must know what happened next. Okay. Um, okay. Got more pages. Okay. This one uh, is something else. The storyteller's face grows gloomy. He thumbs through the pieces of paper that hold his hidden past. My lost memories. These pages have the road of paved the road to them. What story are you interested in? Uh, none. Sorry. Uh, okay. Want to know more about you? Uh, I, I thought that we could give him... He, he had asked us for magic essence before he disappeared and that he could fix some things. Um... Okay. Uh, apparently we don't have the option. Oh, please can't examine the items I'm carrying. Okay. This is, let me touch them and tell you what I can see. All right. So we've been through some of these. Um, a fragment of a ring appears in the old man's hand. What a powerful item. This ring was created by an inquisitive and free mind. As a rule, such people either become geniuses and creators of a new era or meet tragic ends. What was the fate of the creator of this object? We can find out together. Get me four vials of magic essence and two bars of cold iron and I will reforge this ring. Storyteller's fingers run over the piece of old, old cloak. I sense power. This item belonged to someone truly powerful. It was created as a gift. It's so hazy. I would like to learn its story, but this would take much to revive such a mighty relic. If you can get five vials of magic essence, two bars of cold iron, and two vials of demon blood, and three skins of magical creatures, I will try to restore it. Alf looks at you with, in, with unusual patience. Shall we? Okay, so we now have a few things that we can have him do. We can't do this one yet uh, because we don't have the stuff. But these two we can do. So this is the broken buckle. Elf cautiously uncorks the vials and begins to work his enchantments. The essence evaporates, turning into light that streams into the buckle. The light thickens, becoming gold. The Covenant of the Inheritor, that is the name of this relic. This buckle once adorned the belt of a glorious knight from Mendev. It is the embodiment of a promise made to a young girl by a powerful deity. A great promise that has changed much in the world. Okay, so we now have the in Covenant of the Inheritor. Uh, when you touch the restored relic, a strange vision comes to you. It is of you. It is as if you can see the events that happened to it in the past. A burning sensation spreads across your chest from the very spot where your mysterious wound sometimes opens. What is this? The influence of the storyteller's spells? Or is it something else? Uh, we'll tell him we had a vision. Uh, we're getting kind of running a little bit long here, guys. But let's wrap this up and then we'll see about doing something else uh, maybe in the next episode here. But we got some more stuff to do here with the storyteller first, so stick around. Uh, the old elf frowns. How strange. You are a remarkable mortal. No one has ever shared my visions before. Um, okay, I think we've actually said that before. Uh, give the storyteller the ring fragment and the necessary materials. The storyteller sets the ring fragment and the bars of metal on his open palm. He clenches his fist, crumpling the metal like paper, and pours essence from his vials over from the vials over it. You feel terrible heat rising from the elf's hand, and when he opens his fingers, you see a beautiful ring. A remarkable object, this. It was created by a talented spellcaster and is able to summon beings from other planes, as if the boundaries set by Phrasma do not exist for it. 
It's a powerful and dangerous item, but it was created by an honorable person. That is probably why it is not used at the crucial hour. There's quiet sadness in the storyteller's voice. Okay, so we have a ring of summoning now. Um, we've gone through these. Uh, and we don't have the stuff to do this one. So we'll do that another time. Okay. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to run down to the cemetery real quick, real, real quick, like, and we're going to have a little chat with old Sociel and wrap that one up too. And then when we're done with that, I think we're going to be mostly done with what we need to do in Dresden. I'll sell off uh, stuff that we picked up that we don't need off screen, and I will get everybody else's mythic feats uh, put in uh, between episodes as well. Uh, you guys don't need to watch me do that kind of stuff. That's that's all boring. So I'll take care of that between episodes, and we will carry on from there later. But let's have a chat with Sociel here, because he is here and he is playing cards. Seder. The soldier stares at his cards in the dim light of a candles uh, of a candle stub. Deal me two more. I'll double down. Coins clink as they land on the barrel. Deal me another one, Sociel says. What? Another one? Are you bluffing, you little... Wait until we lay down our cards and you'll see if I'm bluffing. You don't immediately recognize Sociel's voice. In battle, he is quiet and composed, but now you can hear furious, passionate excitement in his words. Fine, you scumbag. I'll call. Deal me another as well. Excitement, passion, and tension seem to hang over the improvised table. It feels like lightning is about to strike. Um, we're going to just let him play it out for a minute here. One of the crusaders says, Damn, I'm out. The soldier angrily throws his cards on the barrel. Go on, show us what you've got. Read them and weep, Sociel reveals his cards with a gloating laugh. Nothing but junk. I knew it, you holier-than-thou types can't bluff. I was, and you fell for it. With this, Sociel slams a card on each of the soldier's soldiers like epaulets and places the rest of the cards on top of the opponent's head. Now you've done it, you. The soldier grabs Sociel by the collar. The cleric immediately raises his fist as if he expected it. At this point, one of the other players spots you in the shadows. Hey, there's someone over there. We've been caught. The jig's up. Let's bail. Candle snub is The candle stub is snuffed out and the cards are scattered into the mud. After a moment, only the embarrassed Sociel remains. What are you doing here? His voice no longer holds excitement. We did nothing wrong. Well, tempers flared a bit, but that usually doesn't happen. I swear it. Ah. Eh. Think this is an appropriate place place for a cleric to be spending his time? Where? Amidst the soldiers resting between battles, where I can monitor how they're coping with everything they've seen and done? Yes, I think it's very appropriate place for a cleric. Uh, I know you would never lie to me, so I think you must be lying to yourself. You didn't come here to minister to the soldiers. Why else would I come here then? To win a copper or two? Nah, you said it yourself. Soldiers come here to wind. Um, no, nah, that's not it. Now ah, you provoked that soldier. You were practically begging for a fight. I was. No, you misunderstood. That was... Sociel searches for the right words to explain himself, but grows dejected and lowers his eyes. You're right. Shame on me. I provoked the fight. I behaved unacceptably. Forgive me, Shaylin. All right. Now we busted him down. Uh... Send him off to his goddess. Uh, no, let's do this. Build him back up a little bit. Don't be foolish. You're mortal, just like the rest of us. Not some all-powerful deity of mercy. You need time to relax like the rest of us. Please be honest with yourself. After a long silence, Sociel nods. Thank you. It's all jumbled up in my mind. This war and the horrors it holds. Our soldiers and what they tell me in their confessions. My own responsibilities. Lines from Holy Scripture. In the midst of all this, it's easy to forget that I have my own needs and desires. Thank you for reminding me. The cleric picks up a dirty card, playing card and twirls it in his finger. I will not come here again. Please don't forbid these games. Things here are mostly civil, I swear, aside from the rare heated argument. 
I'll be honest, I'll miss playing cards. That excitement when you have almost no chance of winning and the risk is high, even though the stakes aren't life or death, just a handful of coppers. But I'll try to find a less destructive outlet. Perhaps I'll speak to Erebeth and ask her to play chess with me. I wonder what will come of it. Socio smiles. Thank you again for hearing, clearing, helping me clear my mind. Good night. All right, guys, there we go. Done, done, and done. And I, like I said, I will get a little bit of work done between the episodes here. Get us uh, ready to go back out. And in our next episode, I suspect we're going to be striking south again. Uh, I'd like to get down to the heart of mystery because I'm I'm super curious about the rest of that uh, that kind of storyline from way back with the conundrum on uh, what was the conundrum unsolved that we had the problems with the puzzle. So I'm I'm, I'm pretty uh, pretty curious about that. So. I want to head that way, so we'll we'll probably take a take another shot at that in our next episode here. But that's going to do it for this one because we're right up on an hour here. So if you've enjoyed this, do me a big favor, hit that like button for me, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button too. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.